I want to preface um, what you're about to hear by letting you know that I absolutely love the church. Um, I attend church almost every Sunday, um, so no, by no means am I attacking the church. If anything, I want to raise awareness of what the Great Commission is, um, because according to Barna Research, um, less than 18% of Christians know what the Scripture teaches about the Great Commission. So if anything, it's to wake you guys up. But Jesus' birth fulfilled the prophecies. He was born of a virgin, the Son of God, lived a sinless life spent three years in ministry with the disciples, all of the miracles that were seen through the Gospels. He raised people from the dead, eventually died a brutal sacrificial death that had been prophesied. He rose from death. He reappeared to the disciples and to thousands of others after overcoming death. He spent another 40 days teaching, proving that he was the Messiah. Then came this moment. After Jesus had died and they were all in this room scared to death and freaking out and wondering if the whole thing was going to come true and wondering if the three days that he, Jesus had talked about, if it really meant like really he's coming back or what. Um, and remember how he walks in and just says, peace be with you. I mean, imagine how they were just like, holy cow, right? Insane. And then to spend another 40 days with him and then to be at this moment where he's telling them, it is time for me to go. And that's when the biggest therefore, think about the word therefore. Have you ever really thought about the word therefore? It's an attaching word. You know, this, therefore, that. Right? I think as parents we probably say, like, I'm dad, therefore. <laughs> well, here at this point I think is the biggest therefore in the history of the world. All authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me, therefore. Go and make disciples of all of all the nations in the name, baptizing them in the name of the Father and the Holy Spirit. So he says, all authority has been given to me. You guys have witnessed everything that I am. Therefore, go. So it's, it's like all of this came down to that. And that's why it bothers me so much when people think that missions is just a thing or it's just certain people's thing. The Son of God making himself man to be seen and witnessed, humbling himself to come poor so that he could connect with us and then to overcome death and all of this amazing stuff. It came down to that for him to say, okay, you saw that. You know it's real. You know I have the power to do anything I want. And I did all of that to get to this moment. The Holy Spirit's coming. Your job is to go. Cover the nations. And we've missed it. Because we, especially the American church, absolutely missed it. We are a bubble of a tiny fraction of a percent of the people on the globe. We have endless... Um, access to the gospel and freedom, freedom from persecution, freedom from any suffering that the gospel that being a Christian would give us. And I'm not talking about, oh, I got made fun of because I was a Christian. I'm talking about death. The rest of, the rest of our friends around the world are suffering. They don't have the gospel. And yet we have it and we keep it to ourselves. John Piper said, one of my favorite Bible teachers, that there are three kinds of Christians. There are zealous goers, zealous senders, or disobedient. We gotta be a goer or a sender. What do you think the ratio should be of goers versus senders? The goal is to take the love of Jesus to every corner of the world. So we need a, we need a strategy of those that will send people, because there has to be senders. Romans 10 talks about that. And then there has to be goers. So if we were going to sit as a Christian church, like a global church, and say, okay, what's the strategy to accomplish the objective? Roughly 320 million people in the U.S. We're going to stick with the American church, just out of relevance. Supposedly 75% Christian. That's a big supposedly, but let's go with it. 75% Christian. So that means 200, roughly 240 million Christians in the U.S. You know how many sent missionaries there are from the U.S. currently in the world? 127,000. Wow. That means 900. That means 99.95 percent senders, 
and 0.05% goers. Global numbers are worse, but that's how the American church has responded to the Great Commission, 0.05%. 7.3 billion people on the planet, 5 billion of which are not Christians. Right? If this were a war, then our objective to reach the nations is an absolute failure. It's a forfeit. Let's get together, guys, Christians, and we'll go reach the nations, which is the goal that Jesus left us before he ascended to be with the Father. 0.05%. I think 50% would be awesome. Every family support a family. Well, it would obviously require sacrifice. That's the point. Sure. It would require that we live in a lesser home and we drive a lesser car and all of that, but we could do it for sure. We'd have cheaper homes, older cars, we wouldn't waste money entertaining ourselves with expensive and stupid self-indulgent things all the time. We would just think of those things. We would put those things to death. We would deny those things in order to send a family. How awesome would that be? Worst case, I'd say 10%. Right? That would require 10 families getting together to send one family to the nations. In, as an average, two to $3,000 a month will allow a family to live overseas. Right? So that would mean... Uh, each family throw like 10 families each family throws in two or three hundred bucks a month that's not even sacrificial mm-hmm. really I mean think about what we spend two to three hundred dollars a month on mm-hmm. that we could say eh, forget that here's where the statistics bring me to tears consider if we even sent one percent every hundred families send one family Wow okay that would be 2,391,000 goers compared to 127,000. To make it even worse, we spent more on pet food and chewing gum than we did on missions. I mean, for God's sakes, in 2018, we spent more on Halloween costumes for our pets. I mean, the, the, these numbers that Brock's sharing are sobering, and I think it's safe to say that, that we're failing at the mission that Jesus left us with. With regards to the covering of the globe with the good news, the American church has completely and entirely failed. That's just the reality of where it is. I'm not a church hater. I mean, we're supported by churches that get this. But it's failed. A deep love of Jesus and and a love of his word would lead us to a more radical lifestyle, for sure. As Christ's love compels us, Christ's love compels us that once we know he died for us, that we will no longer live for ourselves. Romans 10, 13, 15. And how are they to believe in him of whom they have never heard? And how are they to hear without someone preaching? And how are they to preach unless they are sent? When Jesus gave the Great Commission, he was just talking to the to his group. A hundred percent of them went. They didn't get together and say, okay, uh, you five go, we'll stay back and send. I mean, they were just like insane. Every hundred percent goers. So 5 billion lost souls, entire countries with no Christian church. Where, what are we doing? And I see this whole part of the world, the 1040 window, that just has no Christian missionaries in it. Of that 127,000 from the States, you know how many are in the box where all the lost souls are? 7%. So 93% of the 127,000 aren't in the area where four and a half billion of the five billion lost souls are. So where's the 1040 window? It's North Africa. It's Asia. It's where two thirds of the world's population is currently located. And I don't know if you knew this, but 42% of the world has never heard the name Jesus. And a majority of that 42% is actually located in the 1040 window. They're predominantly Muslim, Hindu, Buddhist. Um, Their governments are absolutely opposed to any Christian organization stepping foot into their country. Um, It is, there's no wonder why only 7% of that 127,000 sent missionaries that Brock mentioned are currently in that window. It is absolutely not the safest place for any Christian to be. I was telling this pastor, man, we don't need an email or a, a care package. We need more people. We need workers. We need help. But at least be carriers of this message for us in suburban America where Christians have fallen asleep. Because really the word of God, what we have in the scriptures, it's, it's insane. It's not neat and nice and 
packaged and clean. It's insanity when you really think about it. Take up the cross and follow me is ridiculous. But because of his love, because of who he was and because of what he was offering, man, people were like, man, where do I sign? I'll die for this stuff. I'll die for this message. People are attracted to that. People see that and they want that. Why? Because their own life doesn't have that kind of purpose. That's what Jesus was trying to get at by constantly telling people, man, if you want to follow me, I don't even have a place to lay my head. So do you really want to do that? And the people who are willing to say, uh, yeah, man, they were the people that changed the world. There's a, there's a world that's dying and I feel like we're going to be held accountable as the ones who knew. The ones who knew. You know, we can't say, sorry, we didn't really understand it. We do understand it. We just run from it. We avoid it. We prefer comfort. If you're anything like me, you're convicted, you're burdened. Um, these statistics are absolutely sobering. And as Brock mentioned, you know, you're either a zealous sender, uh, a zealous goer, or disobedient. And so that's what we got to ask ourselves the question. You know, the Lord gave us the great commission. It's the great commission. It is being on mission with him to share this gospel, to share this good news with a dying world that's around us. And so the question that we all need to ask ourselves is, are we, re are we willing to deny self? Are we willing to deny comfort and, and get out of our comfort zone and do something about it?